Okay, so welcome to my talk. And my name is Angel Bertini. I will talk about generating weird files with Mitra. And uh, I've been a hacker for some time, malware analyst and infosec engineers. And this talk is my, on my own views and opinions. And uh, this talk is no new exploits, nothing to be patched, just file format tricks. And uh, we'll cover a few topics related to weird file formats. And let's start with the first, um, you can abuse, you can, you have different depth of file parsing. You can just identify file types by just checking the magic, or you can go further at structure level and parse or, vali and or validate the overall structure. And if you want to like render, print it or anything, then you need to parse actually every element. And for each of these depth of parsing, you have different depth of, you have different abuses. So you can add fake magics to full identification, or you can add fake structure elements to store either foreign payloads or foreign payload with a file type. So to create polyglots, and then you can go on and do things like hash collisions and near polyglots. And if you are abused at parser levels, like uh, what happened yesterday with the VBR and MBR polyglots is um, uh, uh, is uh, abuse parsers themselves. So you need in this case to know the difference between two parsers and create ambiguous files or file systems. So uh, just remind clarification, it can be either just the magic or the full file format. If not, it's a polymark or a mock or polymark. And it can be one file format or several and there could be some overlapping between the two different, two, one, one single file or two files with some overlap. So in this case, it's either a polyglot or a near polyglot. And uh, these are the abuse that we're gonna talk about. I mean, not all of them, but the abuse that I know about file formats. And uh, I gave some talks on each of these topics, but today uh, this is what is covered by Mitra and this is what I will discuss. Some more talks, well, I, some the other ones I gave talks already and nothing new in our case. Especially Mitra is a generic tool. That's very important. There can be a lot more abuses, but Mitra is a generic tool. That's the, the important point. So Mitra is just an open source software, a mighty license, and it just takes file, two files as input. It tries very naively to identify the file types, and it tries with different uh, combination and strategies to generate possible polyglots, and optionally, if you want, near polyglots. So you just run Mitra with a DCOM image and a PNG image, and it will, if you if everything works fine, it will generate a working polyglot, a DCOM PNG polyglot, for example. So it follows different strategies. Uh, the first and easiest strategy is just concatenation, which means yeah, abusing appended data more or less. So basically, when you have one file type that tolerates appended data, which is very common, and another file type that doesn't need to start out of set zero and fits. I mean, starts the, the file, the, the top file is small enough so that the second file is still valid. Uh, usually it's just about copying data, but sometimes it requires some tweaking like rotating uh, the, the content of the file B. And uh, if the, at the step of concatenation, sometimes there are requirements of updates in the top file. Most of the time there aren't, but yeah, that's no big deal in general. And it's an old trick that still works and still uh, you bypass security and everything. So yeah, it's very simple. You can usually just concatenate two files blindly, but it still works and it can still be powerful. So my typical rant is that uh, many polyglots would be prevented if formats were required to start out of set zero. And uh, if in the next file format you design or in your parser, you just enforce magics to be presented of set zero, it will save us a lot of headaches. Another caveat, another um, strategy of polyglots and combination is just based on the abusing cavities or so filling empty space. Basically, some file format actually genuinely by default start with a lot of zeros, which is very interesting because sometimes you typically take, so for example, the 16 bytes of a file to identify its file types. And DCOM and ISO are two standard file formats. So if you don't know DCOM, it's what your doctor used basically. And it's the standard and medical environment. And DCOM starts by default with 128 bytes by courtesy, which is typically null or sometimes write a signature, but it's not relevant for the file format. It's just storage. And in the case of ISO image, it's uh, 32 kilobytes of uh, 
supposedly empty sectors. They can be used for in the case of hybrid ISO, but by standard, it could be zeros. And so basically, you can just do what you want with this space, and you could put a file, and if it works, and if it tolerates open the data, there you go. It's like concatenation with, with fixed offsets. So it's as simple as that. Again, it might require some uh, ad adjustment, but typically it's just copying stuff. So uh, well done, Polymox. Now that we have know how we can abuse some space, is that uh, the idea of uh, file type identification is that you require a specific magic at a given offset range. And the tool file that you, you know, you know the, the command line st standard tool is kind of type by category in alphabetic order. So basically it does ACORN, it does console in the, and then Windows at the end because, because W, that's how it works by alphabetic order. And in a real example, for example, uh, the, um, this CV is a P, um, a P uh, DCOM polyglot and it's a Windows executable. It starts with MZ, but with file, it's identified as a DCOM Im medical image because image, so this, all the signatures contained in, are in image as can be for M as DOS, even if the DOS magic is at offset zero before the magic. So it's not by file order, it's by category order. And indeed, even if it was one cry, file would just say it's um, DIMCOM medical image. So it's simple bypass, but you can already see that it could create some big problem if, you real, if your security is that fragile. So mock files is very trivial, right? Just put a mock magic at the right of set. But if it's good enough to bypass security, why bother, you know? Of course, I went the extra mile and I created a bit extreme poly mock. Like it's mostly, it contains no data at all. It just contains a lot of magics. So it's detected as 100 different 90, 190 different uh, file types by file with the keep going parameter or bin walk. And you can use that, uh, the source of that file as a reference with the magics to know which magic you should put at which offset to have which identification. And we'll see that, that later as an example, but you can very easily, also with the help of Mitra, uh, make a MP4 being detected as Berkeley DB, like if you want, it's a very easy example. So my rant again, many mock files would be prevented if formats were required to start at offset zero. And again, enforce magic at offset zero. That's to make security simpler. So now a bit more complex uh, strategy to combine file formats is to parasite one of the files. So basically abuse comments and Typically, file format tolerates commands because it's normally not a problem. The only restriction is about their length, usually. Sometimes it's about that content, but usually it's not a problem. And then again, the same stuff about the start of set of file B and whatever. But yeah, basically it's just you declare a comment and you put whatever data you want in it. So yeah, really like same song again, no problem, except that you need to make some room either in, in an official way with comment or not. Sometimes you abuse the file format. There is no comment per se, but you can make some space in such some way. So comments are a normal feature and they are very useful. You know, comments are usually just storing metadata like which software or what's the author or this kind of thing. And if it's a single or a few and a small and text comments, then it's good. But if there are many, it's huge, comments with very high entropy, then it can be very fishy. But on the other hand, comments are not considered critical. So they could be either removed or merged or scanned. So, you know, if you want some filtering, you could also check the comments, but in general, in practice, they are typically just totally ignored, even if you put thousands of them in a file for abuse reasons. And for that, sometimes you need to, to, you can declare a comment or you can just force your way in the file. And then it depends on the structure of the file. So if your format is like, a, is a pure sequence, like it's a train. And if you want to add bogus information, bogus uh, goods in a train, just add a wagon at the wagon boundary and update the wagons counter. If it's like an archive and it's like a set of stacked box, then just add your own box. You know, like you can say, you can imagine a real container chip, con container ship, and you put a new container with some stuff inside. If it's uh, pointers like a book, then you just add some pages somewhere and you update the table of contents so that the chapters are still properly indexed. 
and if it's like a chain of elements that are chaining each other, like towed boats, then just one of the rope longer and put some data between two boats, basically. So in the tricks uh, that I've come across and that are sometimes implemented in Mitra is that some formats have many different forms like PDF and GIF notably, but not the only one. And uh, some forms are awful to abuse and some forms are much easier. So you, it's worth going the extra mile to make a generic software to find the right method to normalize all the input files to an abusable form. And then you, you actually you abuse that form rather than having to handle everything. So basically you piggyback on an existing software or a trick to support all the files coming from that format. They will render the same way, but they will be much easier to hack and much easy, much uh, uh, yeah, will save you a lot of time. So, which is why uh, Mitra can be can be can stay very simple where, while being generic and working maybe with most files, most standard files. You know, it's it's a trade off. Another trick that was uh, also useful is um, I guess with some light is it better maybe. Um, Another trick that is useful is that some formats don't tolerate appended data. They're like, for example, there are few sequence of chunks until the end of file. And basically if you append something, uh, the, the, the typical parsers will reject the file because they couldn't parse some sequence. They just kept parsing everything. And in this case, the file will be rejected. So a, a trick to, is to wrap the appended data in a trailing chunk parasite. So it's just another kind of parasite maybe, but for the, Second file, it's like being appended. Basically, you just declare a, com a chunk with the right length so that the appended data that is coming next is still, uh, um, how do you say, is, is still uh, tolerated by the initial parser. So it's still a parasite, but for the second file, it's, it, it's like if the second file doesn't tolerate appended data, then this file think it is appended data because there's no data for that. And a uh, combination of these strategies together is uh, our zippers, which is com mutual comments. So zippers like the thing you could have on your clothes right now. So each size, each teeth is embracing the teeth of the other side. Each size is commenting out or par parasitizing the other side. And basically uh, in a simpler way, uh, I mean, the, the simplest ones are with a file format that start out of Z0 but typically tolerates only a very small parasite because otherwise you could just put the second file in it. And uh, the first file needs to tolerate appended data. But then you, you see that each piece of the file will, be, will have a role for the other file. So one is the parasite, the head is the, on one side is a parasite of the other file and so on. So uh, the important part here is to overcome the limitations of the second file has a cavity or it can start later. And uh, the first file uh, has a very small parasite. So basically if file B is too big, and in the case of GIF, for example, a, a GIF command can only be 255 bytes. So it's very, very limiting. So instead you will use this command, this parasite to just host the head of the second file uh, so that the second file can create, declare a file type and also a command to host the body of the other of the initial file of this uh, of the file A. So basically, you parasitize parasitize both sides, and then you merge the result. It can be very tricky. There there is wrapping and everything, but in practice, it enables a lot of more combination. Again, with the files that have very small parasite, or uh, yeah, or um, or turn, don't tolerate up any data and so on. So yeah, the role, the, the, the zippers are good for overcoming constraints. And all this in total gives the result of compatibility of Mitra. And again, there are more, com there are more possible polyglots, but Mitra is generic, which is why, for example, uh, PostScript and MP4 start out of set zero, but they don't enforce their magic out of set zero. So more uh, polyglots are possible, but they, are not, they cannot be done generically. So yeah, Mitra doesn't support that in a generic way, even though possible, uh, Mitra, uh, it, even though it would be possible. So Mitra supports many formats and tries all the combinations and the strategies, okay? And uh, it shows that each file format characteristic 
enables more possibilities. And it also shows that whenever you have formats enforcing a magic that offset zero, the combination is not possible. So again, I reinforce my rant saying it will save the future security, make it simpler by preventing that to happen in further file format. So under the hood, we try is probably much simpler than you think because I really yeah, want it simple. And again, you don't have to fully understand the file format to abuse it. You just need to do the bare minimum and Mitra is about doing the bare minimum. So just identify the overall structure, look, look for abusable characteristics, then just move blocks of data around. And optionally, you need to adjust some offsets and lengths or whatever, but that's all. And this is exactly what Mitra does, not more. It doesn't fully understand all formats. It expects standard files and it doesn't validate the output files. It's not a full parser. It's not an analysis tool. At, use at your own risk. And we'll just abuse JPEGs like Mitra does the laziest possible way. JPEG is complex. And yet, well, let's look at the small JPEG, you know, the FFD8 and the JFIF and, you know. And uh, a JPEG file is a sequence of segments. They start with an FF, then with some marker and optionally a length of two on two bytes. And if you just want to add to a parasite to a JPEG, you just need to insert a command segment. So FFP, like file format forever at offset two. And you just, so you just write at offset two because this is the first boundary of segments, FFF2, then the length, and then the content of the parasite. And then you, hosted some extra comments, some extra data, parasite, parasite data in your JPEG. And that's exactly what JPEG, my Mitra does. It doesn't know, that's a whole source file of JPEG support in Mitra. You just know the signature, just know the parasites are supported, where to get the file and how to wrap, how to wrap the parasite. That's all. So if you want to know more, check my POCs, my docs and so on. That's really how smart Mitra is, no further. And uh, let's see a, a look at the options of Mitra. So if you first want to embed any payload without a given file type, then just uh, use the dash F parameter to force it as a binary blob with no type. It's also useful if you just want to make some room in your file. And so for example, if you take a JavaScript and for example, a PNG, then you just use the dash, the F, script, the dash F parameter and it will make a valid PNG with JavaScript payload. It will be kept as is. And uh, if, you, if with the right extension, it's a working JavaScript uh, payload. Or you can use to create a, uh, po uh, yeah, a polymock file. If, so for example, you have an MP4 file and you just create a, a, a small buffer containing the signature you want with padding. So you have to find it yourself, but it's not very complex. And then you just ask Mitra to say, hey, put this buffer inside the MP4 file and our file will see that file, even though it's a working MP4 file as a Berkeley DB uh, yeah, file type. And basically generate, to generate a polyglot, there are not many options, except that the order of file arguments matters. So the first file will be on top. So you just have to know what you're doing or just try the reverse uh, argument to try both directions. And if you want to know, it will give you more information why a polyglot uh, strategy will not work. Maybe the, the, ca the cavity space is too big, it's just too small or something, then just try the verbose uh, argument, flag argument. So now let's move on to near polyglots. Uh, the thing is sometimes there are polyglots that are not possible because for example, you, there's no B, PNG and BMP polyglot because both formats start at offset zero with different signatures. So the overlapping of PNG and BMP prevents a polyglot. But uh, so near polyglots are just kind of a weird workaround. I mean, it's not a workaround. It's just a, two files, non-working polyglots with the same body and just some overlapping data to be replaced. Of course, the smaller that data, the better like just the magic. And the, the idea is to have an external operation that will swap the overlapping data. So it's of course not two totally different data. It's mostly, they are mostly the same and you want to find the strategy to replace the overlapping data. So the, and the one of the idea is to do this replacement with a cryptographic operation. So instead of just copying a buffer somewhere, 
you just use encryption or decryption with specifically computed or brute force parameters like initialization vector or nonce to create what I call a crypto polyglot, which means uh, the overlapping data will be replaced by this cryptographic operation. And you have the extra uh, point that the, the other payload, when the clean payload is in clear, the malicious payload is encrypted or I mean, it's not in clear. So it's quite powerful because it may look with this, like a standard file with appended data, but later it's actually um, a malicious file. So for example, here is a BMP PNG near polyglot with 16 bytes of overlap. So again, you can create that very easily with the extra overlap uh, parameter in Mitra. And uh, again, with the two versions of the 16 bytes buffer, it's, it's either a valid BMP or a valid PNG. And with combining with one of the tools that you can find on the Mitra their repository, but which I used to call inscription, is that uh, you can have this valid BMP be, when you encrypt it with the proper initialization vector with standard ASCBC, then it becomes the PNG that you want it. So again, you uh, abuse encryption by, uh, by uh, crafting some specific initialization vector and you end the file, uh, you control the input and the output more or less. And another example is with three bytes of overlap, you have a BMP and a postscript near polyglot. And here it's what's called time encryption. So basically you upload the BMP to your file storage. It encrypts the file, but if you know the key uh, scheduling and a rotation system, and then there's a new key that is, uh, so the, 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 the file is encrypted, is stored encrypted, and there are key rotation, new keys added to the key ring, but because it's authentically decrypted, it will just try every new key until there is decryption. And you can abuse that, you can brute force that so that the actually the ciphertext will be decrypted authentically with different keys. And then it will give you the second file. So it was clean before. And when the new key appeared in the key ring, then it will be a different payload that you can plan. And again, this works in a generic way. So it could be this slide deck and wanna cry or whatever. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's, it's totally generic. And you can do that yourself uh, with the, with the tools in the Mitra repository. So to conclude on all this, Mitra is a simple weird file tool that is easy to extend with minimal file format knowledge. Mock files is very simple. It's about patching the right magic at the right offset and you can use Mitra for that. It's trivial, but still good enough to bypass some security. Near polyglots might seem initially very weird but they are very powerful when suddenly mixed with encryption operation. And they don't apply just to CBC and GCM, but also with OCB3, GCM, SIV and everything. And not everything, but yeah, I mean, all this. And you, I, if you want to know more, just look at the uh, actual, um, uh, just look at the actual, um, the, the talk I gave before. And we actually get, uh, wrote, uh, we revised our paper, our academic paper on time encryption officially called authenticated encryption without key commitment, how to abuse and fix it. Uh, and and this, so this paper was revised last month. And this paper and also this slide deck are crypto polyglots. So right now I'm presenting with this, uh, the public uh, slide deck and using the software that you can extract from the file with two opposition SSL operations. So this is technically working because this is exactly what I'm doing right now. So uh, this uh, slide deck contains also a PDF viewer, which comes out uh, from the same file with open SSL output. And again, maybe I didn't insist enough. One more thing, no more polyglots. Security should be simple. Type identification should be straightforward enforce magic sets offset zero in your next file format, please. And in your parser, if you can. And if you if you think it's something outdated, well, I found out that Nintendo Switch and our executable don't have their magic at offset zero. So if you think it's uh, an idea of the past, you're wrong. <laughs> now, uh, thanks for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'm all ears. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for that. Um, we, we have a fourth question. Uh, can you read it? Uh, 
Uh, or do you want me to read you? Oh, me? Yeah. Uh, you, you, you can you can uh, click on uh, Q and R on the um, on the bottom right on the, on your windows. Two uh, on what? <laughs> uh, two, okay, uh, I'm going to read uh, the, uh, the Q and A. No, oh, nice present. Oh, the, okay, on question and answers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Will you try? We try to add. So these questions, there are the two questions from Michelle Ham, right? Yeah, absolutely. It, it's very easy to append a zip to file to regraph it. Yeah, yeah, we used that for pork or GTA four long ago, so yes. <laughs> oh, so yeah, I have to type the answer? No, if they don't. No, so no, I click no. on first. Up. I click on first. Oh yeah, go ahead. Nice presentation. Will you try to add the merge of partition disk image? Uh, so if I'm answering live, right? I have very little knowledge of partition or file system for now because I was focused on file format. But yes, I saw the talk and man, it seems like promising to look at file, for, file systems a bit further. So uh, yeah, maybe next version of Dimitra. Okay, thanks. Um, does anybody uh, have another question? Uh, I can uh, ask you one. Um, uh, is it possible uh, to, to use uh, file manipulation in order to uh, avoid uh, antiviruses uh, detection or malware? Yes, the most, uh, most likely. I mean, they already know about the most standard ones, but uh, usually, as you know, they are uh, they have to be behind because otherwise the bad guys are, <laughs> are idiots. But yes, uh, there are already plenty of detections as soon as you have, for example, a do um, a P file with some HTML in the header, there will be some detection they trig triggered there. So you could just use that the other way around, but yes, it's definitely possible. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have another question? Hermitra handles two types of uh, files. If you want to go further and see what are the possibilities for making a political blot out of uh, three file formats? Is it something you want to handle in the future? I don't see, so actually, I don't want to actually do that uh, in a, how do you say? Uh, because then very generically it's very complex. Already some cases are really complex when there is uh, a data after the parasite in a chunk and there is wrap any data. I mean, sometimes, and there are CRCs, sometimes it's already like you you might want to run Z3 instead of Mitra and generate Mitra wants to, to stay very simple. But yes, I kept some extreme examples. And uh, this is my one of my example of multi-polyglot. So it's a PDF executable HTML DCOM or ISO APK and Super Nintendo and it's public. So it's just a demonstration that yes, you can do go further with polyglots, but uh, Mitra is not gonna be able to do that out of the loop because you have to really abuse uh, different things together. And I just want this to be simple. But on the other hand, typically you don't want to go that way to have more than two because you just want to have one clean that bypass stuff and one malicious, right? And this is the other way around. You want to catch the bad one and not be fooled by the minimum, right? And typically you want, bad guys want to fool you with the bare minimum. So it's, you, you will not get further into exploitation, I think with such a crazy, uh, crazy file where, which I just, yeah, it was just an exercise of style, I'd say. And a rainy afternoon. Any more questions? I don't think so. Okay, thanks again. Uh, thanks a lot, um, Ange. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, there is one on the IRC. Oh, oh okay. Even. Yeah. I'll read it out. So one question from Aklis. Uh, would be Polyglot work with other identification tool like Fido or Secret? I didn't try, but feel free to. And it it just push. depends if they are just identify file types or actually validating the structure or anything. But uh, yeah, you know, in many so many write-ups, I see people relying on file. It's like, okay, at least maybe I can show how easy it is to fool it by doing this. But yes, uh, you can also trigger 
uh, trick uncase with polyglots and, uh, and ambiguous files. So in this case, it's much more serious, but I did, certainly didn't try and didn't have the time to try on all identification tools out there. A uh, question from uh, Virtual Apps. Uh, have you ever considered using constraint solver Z3 or similar to create polyglots? And you mentioned it, I think, MZ3. Yeah, uh, I didn't need to. Uh, but sometimes it's really difficult. Uh, I, I think sometimes for uh, for hash collisions, it was a bit difficult that you have uh, one intermediate CRC at some point and then another one of later and they both cover the same buffer. It was tricky. But yeah, I mean, it can be, I don't think polyglots in uh, usually, generic polyglots definitely are not worth it, but feel free to prove me wrong and do it. I will move on to something else, most likely. Thank you. Okay, thank you.